If you were going through your spare change and you saw this quarter, would you realize that it sold for nearly $20,000? That's right, $20,000 and there's a few things you need to be looking out for on your coins that are gonna make them worth a crazy valuable amount of money. You don't wanna miss these coins because the last thing you wanna do is end up spending these coins when in reality, they're worth thousands of dollars. All right, so let's jump into this video. So this is a 1937 Washington quarter with a double die obverse graded by PC Jess, I meant to say 66, so a great really highly and, and when you're first looking at this coin it looks like it's dirty and it's not in that good of condition but that has a little bit of tone in its natural occurring process to it now you're likely going to need some sort of magnification to see what I'm going to be pointing out here but this little double die obverse is what allowed this coin to sell for so much money so if you look at Liberty at the top the motto at the left there and the date at the bottom you're going to see a bit of what looks like doubling on the coin doubling in combination with the high grade of a mint state 66 allowed this coin to sell for almost twenty thousand dollars it sold for nineteen thousand $1,550. So this is one of my favorite type of coins here. This is an undated 25 cent Washington quarter. So if you're looking at the back of this coin, it looks pretty typical, pretty normal. This coin sold for $42,000 and this is exactly why. So again, you're looking at the reverse of this coin. Now this is exactly what you need to be looking out for on any of your Washington quarters. Now if you flip the coin over to the front of the coin, you're going to realize that this coin doesn't have a front. It has two reverses. That's right. It has two backs. This is a genuine mint error and it was graded by NGC and Mint State 6 66. This is one of my favorite type of error coins, and if you ever come across something like this, it can be worth a lot of money. Now, make sure that if you're buying a coin like this, that nobody just cut the coin in half and glued it together. There's people that are really good at altering coins and making them look like genuine errors, so you have to be wary. You have to be aware that if you're buying an error coin, you don't get scammed and ripped off. That's why these third-party grading companies like PCGS and NGC are very reputable, and they're well-known to make sure that you have a really awesome, genuine coin, and it's not altered. This little Roosevelt dime sold for $45 $5,600 and this is why. So this is a 1968 10 cent Roosevelt dime graded by PCGSA proof 69 with no S mint mark. So holy cow, the highest grade we can get in grading is 70. This is only one point away from the perfect grade of 70. This was also graded as a proof coin. Proof coins will have a shiny, lustrous appearance to them. It almost looks like you're looking into a mirror when you're looking at the coin. This one also has a no S mint mark. So this coin should have an S mint mark around the date there. This is very important. So there's tons of 1968 Roosevelt dimes that don't have an S mint mark, but they're not proof coins. So for your coin to be worth a lot of money, it has to be a proof coin from San Francisco, but it doesn't have the S mint mark standing for San Francisco. So just to summarize that, the S mint mark on your coin stands for San Francisco. And if your coin does not have that S mint mark, it probably means you're from Philadelphia. But if it's a proof coin from the San Francisco mint and it's missing the S mint mark, that's what's going to make your coin worth a lot of money because this one sold for $45,600. Here's the coin we've all been waiting for. So this is a 1943 one cent penny here. This one was struck on a bronze plant graded by PC Justin AU58 with a CAC sticker. So this coin goes to show that you don't need the most high grade condition coin for it to be worth a lot of money. What you really need is scarcity and rarity. So this coin is incredibly challenging to find because most 1943 pennies that you find are going to be struck on a zinc coated steel planchet and not this bronze planchet. The reason for this was this is called a transitional coin. During the minting process during the war efforts, they started transitioning these coins to allow for the war efforts to use bronze in their ammunition to support the war efforts. Long story short, if you have a 1943 penny and it looks like this and it's struck on a bronze planchet, you could have a coin that's worth a crazy amount of money because this one sold for $305,500. Hit that subscribe button. It really just help out with the YouTube algorithm. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next video.